Join us by the fireside for our evening tales of true life, strange experiences with things that lie beyond the veil of the known and into the misty depths of the mysterious and unknown. The man in the bear suit. I have an interesting story that my uncle told me. Um, we kind of regarded him as our crazy uncle in our family. He could have made the whole thing up, but I just don't get the feeling he did. And anyway, he told this story to the family so many times that my grandfather got so fed up with it that he said to him, if you tell this story again, you're not going to get the inheritance. Anyway, this story supposedly happened in the early 90s. My uncle says he was visiting a few friends in the U.S. and they were planning to go hiking and camping in a national park or forest. Um, I don't remember which place exactly it was because it was about 10 years ago and I've forgotten, you know, a couple of details of the story. So anyway, my uncle said that right from the start, something just seemed off. One of his friends kept on looking into the woods as if looking for something. While they were walking along a trail and a couple of times there seemed to be sounds coming from where they were looking. On the first few nights they slept in tents and nothing really out of the ordinary happened. Then on the third day they reached a cabin owned by one of my uncle's friends and they stayed there a couple more nights before heading home. These nights where they stayed at the cabin are when my uncle says everything happened. Apparently, the friend who had been constantly looking off into the woods had appeared to be a little bit on edge earlier in the trip, but now he seemed super agitated. The first night at the cabin, they heard this horrific scream. It was very high pitched and it was off in the forest but they thought little of it, you know, because maybe, you know, it was a coyote or just something, you know, unexplained that, you know, is actually just an animal. But apparently this scream seemed to be making the agitated guy even worse. Over the stay there, they were constantly being woken during the night by these moaning noises or by knocking sounds. It was like someone was tapping on the side of the cabin with a branch or something. There were also sounds of things on the roof, things scrambling under the cabin. It was elevated off the ground. And apparently, on the last night at like maybe 4 a.m., there was a huge crashing sound which woke them all up and brought them running to the living room, which the front door opened directly into. The front door had a bunch of big cracks in it, and they saw what seemed to be a large, dark figure in the window, silhouetted by the moonlight, which seemed to move slightly, then it disappeared. When they checked the door in the morning, it looked like something had been smashed in, leaving a big mark where the wooden door had been crushed. They freaked the hell out, and they got out of their ASAP. On the way out, this agitated friend revealed what was worrying him. Apparently, one of his friends and he had planned to scare everyone by having his friend dressed up as a bear in a bear costume and follow them through the forest and then lunge out of the woods at them on the last night before the cabin. So this friend, the, you know, the agitated guy, had seen his buddy going into the woods in his bear suit. He'd seen him following them on the first day and then been faking, you know, being worried about the bear. And then on the second day, the bear friend couldn't be seen. And the guy had become worried for him, especially after hearing the scream a few nights later. This spooked everyone even more because the guy who had disappeared was apparently an experienced hiker who shouldn't have had any trouble in the woods. Apparently, there was a general feeling that whatever had smashed the cabin door had been out in the woods with this guy. And you only had to connect the dots 
to see this guy's fate. There was a search for him with the police and such, but apparently it didn't last too long and only a half empty water bottle and a hat were found. Unknown if they even belonged to the guy. The friend who owned the cabin put it up for sale a few days later. Most of them thought it was a bear or maybe some psychopath messing with him. But my uncle, who has always been quite religious, says it was a demon who was stalking them. Apparently, he felt guilty because he was a minister or pastor and the demon had specifically been after him, which is why the friends had never experienced anything similar before. I remember the last time it was brought up at Christmas 10 years ago. My grandfather silenced my uncle by saying, you experienced a Sasquatch, big deal. Now shut the hell up and let me eat my potato. I remember that exactly because my grandma made a poster of that quote and keeps it on their wall. So we never heard, you know, what happened to the guy. There was no trace of him. And he was just one of these many people who disappear into the great wilderness, you know, and are never seen again. And it was just completely unexplained. It seems that every year, quite a lot of people go missing, apparently, in these national parks, you know, in the U.S., Canada, you know, these because they're so big, these places. And, you know, people just go in there, disappear, and are never seen again. Not even a trace of their clothes or anything, um, you know, quite often. Uh, I mean, sometimes, obviously, they find, you know, um, signs of, of them being there and clothes and things like that. But in many cases, people just disappear. So you just kind of wonder, don't you? Um, what a terrifying fate, though, for someone to just be killed by some you know, unknown being in the woods and just go through that terror. Um, wow. Anyway, scary story. The Tormented Joker. I've had a lot of really weird things happen to me um, in my life, which, you know, if anyone wants to hear, I'll tell some of it. But this one comes from my brother-in-law personally. I think he's a good person, but I trust him also 100%. So it was about 2.30 in the morning when this happened. The doorbell of my parents' house was just ringing and ringing crazily. Um, so shocked and confused and all the lights were on, so my dad blazed in a furious trail to the front door to see who the hell was waking us up at that hour. We were all surprised to see my future brother-in-law. Well, call him Dave, standing at the door in a state of panic. Dave, what the hell are you doing here at such an ungodly time? My father questions as he motions for Dave to come inside out of the pouring rain. His clothes were drenched and he had squeaky boots. He lurched into our abode to reveal that he looked far worse than we had originally thought. He was pale-faced and shaking nervously. He could just shudder. That was, that was it. And then he thought of where he could begin to explain to us what was going on and what he was about to divulge would be even believable by any of us. It grabbed me, he said. And that's all he would say, for a while at least, before he began to finish what he was originally trying to say. I've heard it, I've heard it before, and now, now it's touched me. What are you talking about, Dave? my father asked, seeming to inquire for the family. What's in my apartment? With our mouths gaping and our eyes wide, we each scanned each other's faces looking for cues to laugh or trying to figure out if he was being serious. He's known to be kind of a joker, so it wouldn't be above him, but this isn't like him at all. 
We were all silent as we leaned in to focus more deeply on what he was trying to tell us. From day one, he continued, I've heard it. Whatever it is, pacing in my living room. Then, gradually, its path has increased. From the entrance to the kitchen sink, into my room, along the side of the bed, back into the living room, as if as if circling the interior. Now, let me take a minute to explain the layout of his pad. He lived in an efficiency apartment, so it was square, with the entrance being on the east side. Then there was a half wall partitioning the living room from his bedroom on the north side. Walking from the door through the living room, you're directly in the kitchen, then a wall to your north where the bathroom is. So it's basically kind of an L shape. So this particular night, apparently, the pacing starts as usual. He had been there for nearly a year, so he had grown accustomed to the footsteps, listening as it went from door to sink, then to his bathroom, then retracing its steps back to the front door. Except this night, was different for some reason. As usual, I heard the pacing begin, but instead of reaching the bathroom and turning around to back to the kitchen, it kept progressing to my bed, alongside it, then back into the living room, starting its path over. I felt the wind as it passed. I felt it. I've had my run-in with the unexplained, so I'm familiar with that feeling. Oh, hell, what am I going to do? I can't even see this damn thing. He continues. So as I'm lying there, listening to this thing slowly pacing around my apartment, seemingly pushing the boundaries, this storm starts to roll in and with lightning flashing and rain beginning to pour down, I decide I'll do what I've always done. Cover my head like an ostrich and pretend like it's not there. Now... We're avid fans of scary movies. You know the kind that depicts some poor sap in the exact situation he's in. And I'm thinking, don't do that, dummy. The thing is always on the bed looking at you when you remove the covers. When he continues. So I'm lying there with the covers over my head, hoping it goes away. Or I go to sleep, whichever happens first. When I hear the blinds. He had metal blinds, you know, the ones that you barely bend them and they make this terrible sound as they're bending. It starts slow, just like the pacing. He motions with his finger like a velociraptor's claw. Chink, 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 chink. Getting faster and faster as it reached the bottom till it started over. Next thing I know, it had done this so violently the blinds were ripped from the window and thrown down across the room. That's when I peeked out and I saw it. With the lightning flashing wildly enough, it would light up my room. I saw it standing right at the side of my bed. He went on to describe what I would say is an extremely dark, shadowy figure that didn't have a definite shape, but you could tell beyond a shadow of a doubt that whatever it was, it was looking right at him. After a short pause, he glanced at us, looking up from the floor and kept speaking. That's when I noticed this burning sensation on my right forearm. Pulling up his sweater sleeve, he revealed what was unmistakably a handprint, but not just any handprint, this hand was giant, far bigger than Dave's, like the hand of some badass cowboy or something. Thick fingers, just a massive hand in general. It was red, like someone had a hold of you and you were trying desperately to escape. And it was tender to the touch. It didn't burn, but it was highly irritated. We all just froze looking for something to say. We're just speechless as my mother goes to get some ointment and my father extends an invitation for him to stay as long as he feels comfortable in our guest bedroom. Needless to say, Dave stayed at our house for quite some time as he broke his lease the following morning and moved everything out. What's even more strange 
is that the handprint lasted for about three days before it actually finally began to fade. Oh, this almost sounds like something demonic. Um, I'm assuming the overall feeling was uh, like one of great kind of dread and negativity and hostility. Because if so, that definitely sounds like that. That's not something good, that's for sure, especially if um, you're getting burn marks from this thing. The hand. This is a long story, but um, I would like to share it. So um, some back information. I and my sister grew up in our grandmother's house. It was a quiet neighborhood in um, California in very close proximity to the Chinese railroad worker grave sites. We were surrounded by farms and fields back in the day, and some of our neighbors even rode horses down the block on occasion. It was a quiet, simple, peaceful little place. Absolutely nothing was out of place or outwardly strange. Everything was always quite predictable and normal. Anyway, around the age of five, my sister and I we were tucked into bed, and as all children do, we whispered about our day until we eventually fell asleep. Late in the night, when all of the adults had retired to their beds and all the house lights were turned off, I woke up and turned to see a red brick wall splitting our bedroom in half. Now, I slept on the half of the room in my bed where there was no door, so I sat up and physically moved out of my bed to literally feel this red brick wall. It was a cold night, and I remember feeling that distinct texture of the rough bricks, cold and solid beneath my fingers. Needless to say, I had a child's instinct of fear and panic. I just began to scream, and I cried out for my mom and for my grandmother. I cried and cried and I banged my little fists against the bricks, calling out my sister's name, but nobody replied. To this day, I remember the soreness of my hands and it felt like I'd been slamming my fists and palms on stone for ages. I just cried and cried. I remember screaming until my throat was sore. Suddenly, from the outside of the wall, a small hand appeared. Now, this is really important because it frightened me and it calmed me all at the same time, which is strange. This hand was small like mine and it literally melted through the bricks that I'd been pounding and screaming against. It was like seeing a Dali painting come to life. It was surreal. I remember just sucking in my breath and trying not to breathe. Tears, which had been cold in the corners of my eyes, fell warm and thick and new. The wall seemed to be moving like it was a fabric, and it was clear that something or someone was trying to get through the wall at very specific areas of it. I was just speechless. I crawled into bed and did what every little girl does. I covered myself from head to toe with my blankets and pillows and stuffed animals before finally crying myself to sleep in fear. I kept thinking and praying too that someone was eventually going to come and save me before I was permanently trapped because this is what I felt would happen. Still, nobody came and I must have tired myself out and drifted into a very uneasy sleep. The next morning when I awoke, I was covered over by every pillow, stuffed animal, and blanket on my bed. I had somehow constructed a small wall of bed things between me and the brick wall. However, now that the morning had come, that red brick wall was gone. I sat up and ran to my little sister's bed, and without hesitation, she sat up and she said to me, I just had the weirdest, scariest dream. I stared at her, my heart skipping a few beats, and I asked, 
Did it have a red brick wall? She turned pale. Even her lips were sickly looking and she started to cry. We've talked about it on and off for years and eventually she told me that that experience is still so frightening for her that she doesn't like to talk about it with anybody. It still terrifies her to remember how vividly that wall was constructed between our beds in the middle of our room. It was distinctly red brick, extremely solid on my end and absolutely soundproof from my perspective. Still, I asked her if she could hear me when I was screaming through to her and she said, I could hear you. And when I tried to reach you, my arm went through the wall. I screamed for mom or grandma because I thought I was stuck. But when nobody came, I was able to pull my hand back through. I tried to get you out, but the wall wouldn't give. This experience, besides being absolutely terrifying and just, I guess it's terrifying in the fact that it's so inexplicable. It left me with a very sore throat, exhaustion, chafed hands the next morning. And it was just the creepiest, most horrible paranormal thing I've ever encountered. I hope this never happens again. Because there are many things that can be terrifying, like ghosts, monsters, you know, things like this. But there's something about this that was just even more terrifying than that. And I, I don't know how to explain that, but it was. There is definitely something very, very um, unsettling about that. What was that brick wall? What did it mean? Was something constructed there a long time ago? Something made of brick? And if so, what was it? You know, what were people building there? And what, if it was some kind of um, house or place? I don't know, barn or I don't know what. You know, what happened there? that um, made this appear in the way it did in the same place where your house is now located and at the same time just give you such a terrifying feeling. I bet the history of that whole area would be kind of interesting to find out. <laughs>